Do you expect me to talk? No! Hi and welcome to Astronical. In this episode we're going to get our ESP32 to talk. Building on that last episode where we connected up our ESP to a speaker via the uh, DAC pin, which we can see uh, is below, and a very cheap audio amp. See this episode link just come up now in the corner if you want to build this simple circuit that you see here, or if you want to watch that episode first. So before we start, let's have a quick demo of what we're going to come to today. So if I turn up the volume on this build, We've got the last, uh, from the last episode, we should hear a famous phrase from the Star Wars franchise. Let's have a look. Or not. Let's reset that. Oh, why is come out? So that doesn't help. Let's just put that in. The Force will be with you. Always. 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 And maybe the I'll hold this up to camera, maybe it'll be louder as well. Always. The force will be with you. Always. The force will be with you. Always. The force will be with you. And you get the idea, we'll turn that down. With you. Always. The force will be with you. Always. I'll leave it a bit in the background. So he's basically a WAV, or is that a WAV file? There are arguments for the pronunciations either way, and I'll tend to use more or less each one randomly. A WAV file is a sign that's been sampled and digitised, uh, usually with some sort of ADC, an analog to digital converter. And all this ESP32 is actually doing is playing that digital sound back through its DAC pin to the audio amplifier, obviously, then it goes, and to the speaker, which is really all any system really does on a basic level, whether it's your phone or your Blu-ray player. It all basically converts some sort of digital sound to an analog um, voltage using some form of DAC. And the code will just bring up the code to accomplish this. Um, there we go. It's very simple, isn't it? Obviously, we're using a library that I've actually written to help with that simplicity so it hides a bit of the complexity from you. So let's go ahead and show you how we get this up and running, presuming that you've built the circuit from the previous episode, as mentioned earlier. Okay. I've cleaned my Arduino environment so I'm installing from fresh. So I now go to X, let's just close that down. Now let's go to extronical.com uh, to basics and audio and then digitize speech sound, this particular bottom option here that you can see. So you go to that page, it will bring up um, my write up about this video. So you just need to scroll down to the library that we need, which is just there. Click on that and download it. And then go to your Arduino environment. By the way, if you need to set up your ESP32 to work with the Arduino IDE, then see this link appearing now in the upper corner. So then we go to Sketch, Include Library, Add, oops, Add Zip File, Locate the download, download uh, that you just did on your system, which for me is going to be in Downloads. There it is. And it should come up down the bottom here, yep. Add it to your libraries. Once you've done that, you can go to File, Examples, right down the bottom, and you should have a new option, XD DAC Audio. XD just stands for Extronical. And we'll open the, the only one example we've got at the moment, which is PlayWav. Which is, just close that one, I'll leave it. Which is the one we saw earlier. This will bring up two tabs, PlayWav and Sound Data. The first you can see is the main code, and the second is the actual wave data for the sound. Uh, and there it is, it's quite sizable because uh, digitized sound, especially uncompressed, is quite large. So, one advantage of wave files is that they are very simple and quick to extract the data and to play. But one disadvantage is that they are uncompressed and therefore the files tend to be quite large. Luckily, 
on an ESP, ESP32, we have quite a lot of memory built in to be able to fit these in. On an Arduino, it would be a different story. The cord, as mentioned earlier, is very simple. We link in the library at the top there, and also link in the sound data that we've just seen. And then here we create um, the WAV object, or the wave object, it's called force with you, so it's of this type of class, this wave class here. And we pass it the address of the sound data we want to play. The second object, this one, Dacordio, handles all the playing of the wave files, which is performed in the background and separate to your main code, which is performed in the background and separate to your main loop using interrupt. So we can see we pass in the DAC pin, in this case 25, uh, so that's GPIO pin 25 on the SP32, and we also pass in the timer, which is that second parameter there, that we're going to use for our interrupt. Uh, on the SP32, there are four to choose from, and we are using timer zero here. The setup just sets up the serial for later use in our main loop. So in the main loop, it has two jobs to do. One is to count up this counter here and send to the serial monitor, which is there. And the second is to check if our WAV file, remember, we created that object called Force With You, which is holding our WAV file, to check if that is actually finished playing. You can you see if it's completed? And if so, if it has finished, then we're going to start it all over again and play it again. Whilst the wave file is playing, the main loop carries on playing the sound independent of, the main, of your main chord. So your chord is not held up until the sound finishes. The sound just plays and your chord can do whatever it wants to do in the main loop. So let's load it and watch it in action. We'll just open the serial monitor while that's compiling. So it's uploading, we should see a stream of numbers come down the serial monitor and the sound should start. There we go. So you can see that the cord is counting up that integer there up to, up to 10,000 now already. So it's whizzing round, counting that up. And as you can hear, the sound is playing totally in the background, independently of what your main loop is doing. So the next thing you want to know is how to add your own WAV files. So let's cover that next. Find whatever sound file you want on the internet. I went to a Star Wars site for mine, it's up on the screen now. Doesn't matter what sound format they're in, whether it's WAV, MP3, whatever it might be. As you're going to resave them anyway, use some software called Audacity. Now most people have heard of the excellent free audio editing software Audacity, but just in case you haven't, then enter something like Audacity Download into your web search and download it. Uh, it's been around for years. I'll also put a link in the description below. So I'm going to go down here, I know which sound I want, I'm going to get the blaster firing. So I'm going to, I, could, I could download it as MP3, I'll download it as a WAV, it really doesn't make any difference because whether it's a WAV or MP3, you've got to save it in a, in a slightly different WAV file format than what these will be saved in. So I'm just going to click there and download it. Then we've got to click there again. There we go. So I've now downloaded the blasted file as a WAV. I'm going to open up Audacity. And with it, I'm going to load up the file. So file, open, and it'll be my downloads folder. Do we go from there? Where's my downloads folder? There we go. And blasted firing. And it may, it may come up with this warning. Especially if it's a new install and it's just asking basically if you want to work with a copy of your original file or the actual original. If you choose the original then any dates you do will change the original file. Otherwise, uh, if, you, if you choose to just make a copy, the original file will be intact. The choice is up to you. I always use it as make a copy and then I can click there, don't want again. I click OK. We'll just zoom in a little bit into the file. And just scroll that along. So you can see that's the blaster firing, we'll just play it. So we need to export this as a WAV file of the format that we can use in uh, on our ESP32. What I first recommend before doing this though is to reduce the sample rate. The sample rate is how many bytes of information they are we are going to send to the DAC per second. And it's here you can do that. So I'm going to select 8000. But just to go over again, the sample rate is actually is how many bytes 
of information are sent to the DAC per second. And for our purposes, the default CD quality that you often get on, uh, on a lot of files off the internet is about 44,100 and is way better than we actually need. You just don't need anything like that kind of rate and it uses up a lot of memory. So we've got the project rate down here on the bottom like I've just done and set it to one of the pre-choices so you can type in your own. If you go too low, you'll find that the quality of the audio is really going to suffer. But generally, we can come quite a bit down from 44,000. Typically, you can go down to about 16,000 for speech and music. For a laser sound, 8,000 should be fine. Once you've done that, you need to go up to uh, Tracks, Mix, and Mix and Render. And then that's now rendered it at 8,000 hertz. We can listen to it. Very, very little difference. You could try and risk going down to 4,000 and doing a retest what that sounds like. But I'm going to leave it at 8,000 for our purposes here. The audio DAC line that I've written will cope with any sample rate up to and including 50 uh, kilohertz, 50,000 hertz, without you needing to do anything. Uh, it will inspect the WAV file itself, what you've saved, and work out at what rate it needs to play it back. So no matter what you set here, you don't need to think about having to pass that to anything. It just look, it'll just look at the WAV file and it'll play it back at the correct speed. But you must always put any file you get through Audacity first to reduce its file size. As I said, they use it a lot bigger than what we need. Don't waste precious storage space unnecessarily. Reduce it as much as you can until the quality becomes too much to lose for yourself. In addition, we need a particular format of WAV file. Uh, so we'll go to, now we need to save the site, so we'll go to save other, export as WAV. And then we'll go to, ignore, although it says WAV file, Microsoft, everything there, we do not want 16-bit PCM. So I'll go down to other uncompressed file, make sure that's set to WAV Microsoft. And if it's not set for unsigned 8-bit PCM, then set it to unsigned 8-bit PCM. And then we'll, we'll click uh, save somewhere. We'll save it onto the desktop or something. Although you can see I've been doing some testing with these already. So I'll just put, I'll call it Blaster New. Then we can see which one we've been using. So Blaster New, we'll save there. And just click OK there. Next, we have to get this data into our Arduino RDE as some sort of C code like we saw earlier. I'll show it you again, let's just bring it up. If you look, it's in nice, sort of ordered bytes, all in C code. Uh, at the moment, it's just a raw file. What you'll need is a hex editor. Don't worry if you're not sure what this is. It's just some software that allows us to edit files at the actual byte level. But we won't be using it for that functionality. We'll be using it for its ability to be able to save the file how we want it in C text format. The hex editor, hex editor I'm recommending is called Hexed or H. XD. I'll put a download link in the description uh, below again, or you can search for HXD hex editor in your web browser and you should get it. So I've got it here, I'm just going to open it up and I'm going to click open and get the actual file we've just had, which was Blaster New, we called it. Click open. And that's the raw data, you can see all in those bytes. All we need to do now is do a select all. On the data like that, so I'm just doing a control A to select everything. Could have gone up to the end edit menu and put um, select all, would usually be on there somewhere. There it is at the bottom. So I've selected all, and then I want to copy that, but I just don't press control C, otherwise, I'm just going to copy data that's not appropriate for the for putting into the Arduino IDE. I need to go to edit again, go down to copy as, and select C, that option there. And that's now copied it in a text format suitable for pasting to our Arduino IDE. So let's switch back to that. And we're going to add in another, let's create some space there. We're going to leave that original sound in. There's no reason not to. And then I'm just going to paste in the blaster fire. So that is now the blaster put in. You can see if I go a bit down, you can see the other one's still there, the force. And I'm just going to call that blaster data, something like that. We can get rid of that bit of comment that's been pasted as well. We don't need to know that. Um, we'll make sure it's stored in ProgMem. I think it does this by default anyway on the SB32. A little bit different on the Arduino. We need to sort of be explicit, but we'll keep that in for compatibility. And then we'll go back to Play WAV. Change the WAV file here to Blaster Data. And we'll recompile. So it's uploading, so we should start with the blaster laser signs very soon. 
Turn that up. Oops, it's really catching it. Okay, so it's good. Works perfect, even a little annoying. I'll just turn that down a bit. And what you could do if you wanted for an exercise for yourselves, if you're building this, you could change your chord a little so you could play either sound. Um, you could choose two GPIO pins and depending on which one is say grounded or something or put to positive volts or whatever it might be, you could play either of the, of the two sounds. One thing to notice if you repeat playing the same sound it will, or anything when you play a new sound it will stop the old sound playing and then play itself. But I'll leave that up to you if you want to give that a try and change it. That's it for now. I'll be expanding on this library, in fact I've, I've been writing, uh, expanding on it already in the last day or so. In the next episode, I'll, I'll give it more functionality. Until then, like, subscribe and share as these are very important to YouTube in getting my video suggested viewers. And thanks very, very much for watching. See you later. Bye for now.